this. Coca-Cola Clear. It's been everywhere recently, descending upon Japan like a plague of locusts. Uh, except having eaten locusts twice in the last two years because it's actually a dish in Japan. Uh, I suspect locusts are better for you than this because, as far as I know, locusts don't give you diabetes. Clear drinks are a big thing in Japan at the moment as consumers here typically subconsciously associate clear drinks with being healthy. I mean, if it looks clear, if it looks like water, it must be healthy, right? Uh, with some notable exceptions. But as people have been asking me about this every day 50 times for the last two weeks, I thought I'd try. I thought I'd give it a little little taste test and see. Well, that's fizzy. It's very carbonated. Um, it smells like uh, smells like Sprite. Anyway, cheers. Well, imagine overcarbonated Sprite with a dash of lemon and a hint of despair, and that's what this tastes like. Um, I don't know why it's so fizzy. I don't know why they've overcarbonated it. I'm pretty sure if you were to shake this bottle up and throw it against the wall, it could take out half a city block. And if you want to experience Coca-Cola Clear in a country that doesn't yet have it, just pour some Sprite. Just pour some Sprite into a Coca-Cola bottle and you've essentially got the exact same thing, if not better. Uh, what have I done? Oh shit. Hi, I'm Brian Cranston, and you're listening to Abroad in Japan. Wow! And people say the special effects on this channel aren't up to scratch. That was sick. Sick it was. Anyway, uh, welcome back everyone to the Abroad in Japan channel. Long time no see. Uh, my name's Chris, I make videos about Japan, generally. And yes, that was an actual shout out from Brian Cranston, one of my favourite actors. Pretty awesome, fairly random, and I'll tell you how it happened in a minute. So today I'm here to announce something relatively big. It's the largest challenge I've ever faced in my entire life uh, and it's a project that will simultaneously lead to lots of new daily videos here on this channel for you guys as well as the chance for me to become the fittest I've ever been physically uh, if, well, should I survive. But hopefully by the end of this video you'll be as excited about this crazy upcoming project as I am. Or at least as excited as I was this morning when I bought this uh, this French stick, this French bread, and I found this little label on the back here describing in perfect English the characteristics of a bakery. Bakery! It adhered to the taste of material, tastes and is deep bread. Uh, I wonder what Brian Cranston would make of that. So first off, the reason I've been away for two months is I made uh, a film about my eccentric Japanese friend Natsuki uh, that came out a few weeks ago here on this channel. For those of you that haven't seen it, I won't spoil it, suffice to say, it's a film about a Japanese guy whose daughter is kidnapped while on holiday in Paris. And to get her back, he has to break into the Louvre and steal the Mona Lisa using nothing but an indoor skydive. The works of Karl Marx and a Chapa Chups lollipop. Or at least that, uh, that's what it should have been. Thank you to everyone for your positive comments. Um, generally, I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it turned out all right. And I learned so much along the way from, from producing it. I learned how to be a better cameraman. I learned how to tell a story. And above all, perhaps, I learned that a lot of people really don't like Karl Marx. They hate him so much that some viewers equated Natsuki's spontaneous, unscripted act of placing a rose upon the grave of Karl Marx as some kind of endorsement for the deaths of a hundred million people that died under the banner of 20th century communism. When in reality, I don't even think Natsuki really knew who Karl Marx was. I think he got Karl Marx confused with Charles Dickens because, uh, to be fair, both of them do have cracking good beards. But with Natsuki the movie out of the way, I've now turned my attention to the next big thing, the next big project. I know I often talk about wanting to get fit in these videos, something I've more or less consistently failed at since forever. Such is the price you pay for regularly consuming deep bread. But one of the reasons is I've never got fit for a specific reason, um, other than wanting to be fit. And I realised if it was ever going to happen, I needed some kind of challenge or aim to go for. And so I've decided to get outside and hit the road and undertake a 2,000 kilometre one month journey across Japan by bicycle. A month on a, on a bike, yeah. Whilst we haven't decided the route yet, I'd like to kick things off in Yamagata Prefecture, my kind of spiritual Japanese home where I lived for three years. I'll do my best to illustrate the route with this incredible animated map. From Yamagata though, we'll cycle down along the Sea of Japan, 
across the plains of Niigata and down into the ancient streets of Kanazawa where the animation will randomly go to shit before going round and down across Lake Biwa which I don't know a lot about and into a little known city called Kyoto before going into Kobe and crossing the Akashi Bridge, the longest suspension bridge in the world. From there we'll go through Shikoku where I'll do my best to avoid mountains because that'll finish me off. We'll then cross the inland sea of Japan once more across the Shimanami Kaido cycle route with half a dozen bridges to conquer, soon into Hiroshima, down through Yamaguchi and across the strait into Kyushu where we'll inevitably end up in Fukuoka to eat some tonkatsu pork ramen and then the animation will randomly speed up, we'll go through Kumamoto and finally down into the southern tip of Kyushu Island to Kagoshima where we'll gaze upon the city's majestic volcano completing our 2000 km journey where I will lay down and die. Am I ready to undertake such a challenge? No. Have I exercised once in the last two years? No. And do I own a bicycle? No, no I, no I don't. But I do have four to five months to prepare. Actually it's less than that now, more like three months. Yeah, don't, don't, don't look at me like that. Yeah, I, I can do it. I know I can do it. Yes, I'm completely out of my depth on this, but that, that's what makes it so much fun, I think. Right? So I've got a few months to get into shape. If I were to attempt it tomorrow, I probably would struggle to cycle 2,000 metres, let alone 2,000 kilometres. I mean, at the moment, I can barely make it up the stairs to my apartment. I can... I can do it. Uh, with that in mind, you might be thinking, so wait, how do you actually plan to get fit? And to that I say, don't worry, that's where Kim Kardashian's appetite-suppressing lollipops come in. Mmm. Appetite suppressing lollipops. Humanity really is completely fucked. But why do I want to cycle though? I guess there's two reasons. First and foremost, I just want to get outside and have a bit of an adventure. I've spent the last month or two inside editing Natsuki the movie, so I'm keen to get back on the road, meet people, discover new places, and just explore rural Japan above all. The second reason I'm doing this trip is I wanted to really push myself creatively because every single day of that trip, every single day of that month long journey across Japan, I'm gonna be making a video and putting it up on the channel. So the idea is you guys are there with me going on the trip across Japan. In many ways, that will be a bigger challenge than the cycle to make videos that are compelling and not just some sort of shitty vlog where it's me on a bicycle with one hand and a selfie stick on another hand. Uh, I mean, that would probably end with me face down in a ditch somewhere in a rice field, which wouldn't be a very good end to this channel. So with that in mind, I'm putting together a small production team to help me film it and edit it so we can actually make a decent month-long series that you guys can watch and enjoy. Now, I have already started trying to get fit. So I've got this weight and I've been working out with this every day, doing that and doing, doing that. You know, whatever that's called. But what do you think? Can I cycle 2,000 kilometers? Will I end up in a ditch? And how do you feel about deep red? Let's face it, guys. These are the sort of questions the YouTube comment section was made for. Now, there is one more exciting announcement that kind of doubles as a productivity tip, I guess. For six years now, I've tried to show you guys as best as I can life in Japan, whether that's the people, the culture, the language, the food, robot talking dinosaurs, it's all there. But over the years, I've built up a lot of stories and experiences and advice uh, about Japan that I know will be useful to people coming here to travel or work or study. And I felt that there had to be another way of doing that, of sharing these experiences alongside video. And with that in mind, it led me to do the first big thing that I've done in a long time, which was to start a weekly podcast, which I've originally named the Abroad in Japan Podcast. Original, isn't it? Now, until six months ago, I'd never really given any thought to doing a podcast. I mean, listening to things, boring, isn't it? How can you see Brian Cranston's face or a CGI explosion or fast-paced jump cuts when you're listening to something? You can't, so how can it possibly be good? And yet, after I began listening to podcasts at the start of this year, I realised that they're actually bloody brilliant because all those boring moments during the day, all those wasted moments when you're commuting to work, when you're sitting at your desk, when you're walking somewhere, you can turn those moments into pockets of learning. You can sit there, put your earphones in, and learn about something that you're interested in. The second reason I never started a podcast though was I knew if I was gonna do it, it had to be good. It couldn't just be me sitting in my bedroom talking into my phone alone. I needed 
to do it professionally and I needed a co-host as well to help me extract ideas and thoughts from my mind. Coincidentally though, I actually met the co-host while we were filming Natsuki the Movie last year in London because he invited us into his radio station. He is Pete Donaldson, DJ of one of London's biggest radio stations, Absolute Radio, and when he's not sitting down with me every Wednesday to discuss life in Japan, he's off doing other boring things like interviewing Ed Sheeran or Chris Pratt or yes, Brian Cranston, and uh, that's how that happened. But Pete visits Japan every year, he's got a deep obsession with the culture and the country, and we found that I was able to answer a lot of his questions about Japan, and we realised that this kind of insider-outsider perspective makes great listening for the podcast. Now, we've been going every Wednesday for a few months now, and we've covered everything from myths about Japan, to detailed itineraries for your trip, to just current wacky news and affairs that are going on around the country. Our most popular segment, though, is just answering questions sent in by listeners. So if you have a question about Japan, it's a great chance to get it answered every single week. Obviously, it is free to listen to. If you are a Mac user, an iPhone user, you can listen on iTunes. If you use Android, there's lots of good free apps, which I've listed somewhere here. Uh, or you can just stream it straight off the internet. I've put all the links to it in the description box below. But uh, yeah, please do join us, guys. It is one of the biggest podcasts about Japan now. Um, but above all, it's just a lot of fun to do it, right? Especially as I don't have to worry about my appearance. Um, I don't have to put all my makeup on before I do a podcast. Although, to be fair, when I say makeup, I mean hair gel. And let's face it, hasn't really done a whole lot here anyway has it. Anyway, that's all for now guys. It's great to be back here making videos again and there are some fantastic new videos on the way. But for now, as always, many thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. It's goodbye, deep bread, and hello, ruthless exercise regime. Yeah, let's do it. Oh.